the other day I caught myself literally on my hands and knees scraping, you know, literal shit from the ground. And I was like, fuck, I love this. John Henry is a true hustler. In fact, he's self-made in every sense of the word. He's had no shortcuts and no handouts. He's a first-generation American, a community college dropout, and he started his career as a doorman. But at the age of 21, he sold his first business. He became an angel investor at 23 and a venture capitalist by the time he was 25. He says he owes his success to taking opportunity and flipping it. I sat down with him pre-pandemic in New York City to talk about his journey. The flip, the flip, oh, I love the flip. This is John Henry, the master of the flip. This is what you call the flip. Tankies from a quarter break, Bentley from his mama whip. My mom worked as a custodian in a really nice school district. And one of the perks that you get is that your kids can go to school in that school district, even if you don't live there. I found myself in a, you know, kind of a very affluent, you know, upper middle class area. And I didn't realize it, but up until that point, you know, I grew up broke, but everyone around me was also broke. And it was like, there was no disparity. And then for the first time I got put in this world where when kids turned 16, they got, you know, brand new Mustangs, but I started realizing it was, it's a blessing to come from scratch because then you have the opportunity to build it up yourself. I develop way more resilience. Like I can take so many hits to the chin now. I can deal with unbearable amounts of stress and still look relatively calm. And the character that you develop um, on the way to building that, I think is what matters the most. After high school in Florida, John moved back to his hometown of New York City with a single dream. I wanted to be the world's greatest jazz musician. <laughs> but he needed money. He started working different jobs. He was a leather salesman, he sold knives, he was a bag boy at a dry cleaner, and then he became a doorman, making $14 an hour. And that was when things really started to change for me because here I am now doormanning in Brooklyn where people were also affluent but there were all kinds of career paths. I think up until that point, I had this notion that a career is what you study. So if you get a degree in math and you're, you become a mathematician, like it was very literal, literal translation of degree to career path. And that was the first time that it really hit me that you can make a really good living doing exactly what you love to do. There was one tenant who took a liking to John and offered him a chance to join his chain of dry cleaners. That's where he got his first idea for a business. It was an on-demand dry cleaning service called Mobile City Services. It was doing revenue of about $100,000 a month. After a couple of years, you know, the business grew and we hired drivers and launched an app and even opened a retail store. And I was getting my MBA on the road pretty much. You know, at some point growing this company, I realized I didn't love dirty laundry. What I loved was this idea of thinking up something from scratch executing it into existence and flipping it. I would say, you know, I learned the art of the flip and you know, I've been flipping ever since. John ended up selling the business for an undisclosed amount, but reports have it at around a million dollars. He'd gone to create an accelerator program and later a VC firm called Harlem Capital. We became passionate about being investors of color because traditionally all the capital has come from very specific networks and we became really passionate about sitting in that seat because we can understand uh, a founder who comes from an untraditional background. It gives me chills just to think about because, you know, how many kids who grow up Section 8 in Washington Heights get to be in the room with a multi-billionaire pitching them to invest in their fund. And so, you know, on one hand, it's humbling. On the other hand, it's a tremendous responsibility because if we're fortunate enough to have these kinds of opportunities, then we're just as responsible to make sure other people have them as well. What I'm in the ring for specifically is to build generational wealth for communities of color. And until that happens, like, I'm not tapping out. John later started a show on Viceland called Hustle where he helped struggling entrepreneurs take their business to the next level. And he continued adding side jobs he could flip. I mean, I flipped my incubator into kind of an event series, into, um, you know, into a 
being a branded podcast host for Gimlet Media and eBay. And then I, fl I flipped that up into, you know, a TV deal. John stepped down from Harlem Capital early last year, but his flips haven't stopped. His latest hustle is an insurance company called Loop. So what's his secret to the flip? So it's a three step for me. It's one, you pick what you want to be about. Two, you pick a medium with which you want to communicate around it. And three, you put out as much content as humanly possible and build your audience up. And once you build your audience up, the leverage tilts in your favor. For me, I've been a good communicator, and so I built an audience online, and that has been my entry point into a lot of different industries. I think the first and most important thing is like, what's that intersection between what you love to do and what you're willing to work really hard at? And if you can build that up, that's your entry point. And then from there, you can just keep flipping and flipping and flipping up. Develop a respect for the baby step. It's, it's really easy to get caught in the temptation of what it feels like to be operating at scale or have a crazy audience or whatever, but you never get there ever without first treating step one with the same reverence as you would the last step. And you just keep flipping up and you might be surprised where you find yourself a few years out um, if you stuck to it.